Well, good day to you and welcome back. Well, we have a, a little comparison today between two typewriters that we have already covered on this channel. This is a 1957 Olympia SM3 and this is a 1960 Optima Super. They're both really super machines. What's interesting about them also is that both companies were once the same company prior to World War II. And there was a split between the companies. They parted ways because of a little thing called World War II and the aftermath of the Soviet occupation of East Germany. So there's some interesting history around these two brands and these two machines are interesting machines. I, I wanna talk a little bit about both things, both their history and how they compare against each other, especially if you're looking to purchase one of these German-made typewriters. Stay tuned. Well, Olympia as a company began to manufacture typewriters around 1931, their first portable typewriters, that is, in uh, Turingia. They continued to manufacture typewriters there until World War II, and then at the aftermath of the war, because of the Soviet occupation of Eastern Germany, three of the uh, former employees of Olympia fled to the West with uh, suitcases of, of construction drawings and some funds, and they helped reestablish Olympia's manufacturing presence in Willemshaven in West Germany after the war. Um, and then by 1949, Olympia had probably about 1,500 employees, and they were already producing their first post-war machines. Meanwhile, back in East Germany, Optima uh, had some tooling for the old Optima Elite typewriter, which was also made before the war by Olympia. And there was a International Court of Appeals in The Hague ruling around 1948 that Optima could continue to manufacture the Elite model in Erfurt in East Germany while Olympia had parted ways into West Germany. So the Olympia Optima Elite prior to World War II became the Olympia SM1 and 2 line and of course Olympia soon updated and modernized the designs of the SM series but Optima kind of continued to manufacture that Optima Elite model uh, for a few years longer. But they continue to make new models also, including this Super, which is kind of based on what's called the Elite 3 version, which was roughly from 1955 to 1961. In 57 to 61, they made the space bar area narrower. A few changes like that, they changed the paper rest up here, or the paper table, I should say. So by the mid-60s, Optima had about 7,000 employees at their height, but they were taken over by Erica and later on by Robotron in 1978, and that was kind of their dissolution from there. In the United States, Olympias were marketed by ITC, International Trading Company, or Trading Corporation. It was a subsidiary of UTC, Union Trading Company. And in 1950 was when uh, ITC first imported Olympias into the United States. So this is a 1957 manufactured in the year of my birth. This is 1960 Optima Super. But I'm kind of interested in how do these two machines really compare, like feature-wise? How do they type? How do they work for you as a writer? On the Olympia, the carriage lock is this silver lever on the left side of the keyboard, and you flip it up like that to lock the carriage, push it down to unlock the carriage. On the Optima, the carriage lock is this lever on the bottom left. You pull it forward to lock the carriage, push it back to unlock the carriage. Carriage return levers are important items to operate the machine. Here the Optima has a nice, long, curving, swooping carriage return lever. The Olympias is very similar in shape, however, although the Olympias appears to be a little bit flatter on top coming across like this and then it comes down, but they're both very similar in length. Here you can see the Optima's angles up a slightly higher angle, whereas the Olympia's is a little bit flatter. Here is the Olympia's line spacing selector, and it goes from one, one and a half to two line spacing. 
The Optimus also has one one and a half and two line spacing located at the same location, but its selector knob is plastic covered rather than being all chromed metal. On the Optima, the line spacing ratchet disconnect is this lever behind the left carriage knob. You pull it down like this to disconnect the line spacing ratcheting. Whereas on the Olympia, its line spacing disconnect is this lever that's pulled down such as this, located behind the pivot point for the carriage return lever. Here we have the adjustable paper guide and on the Olympia it has a range of 46 millimeters of movement whereas on the Optimas it has a range of 38 millimeters of movement. On the Optima the release button for the paper support is on the left side such as that and it is a telescoping support whereas on the Olympia it's on the right side of the carriage. On the Optima, the paper scale has markings for the line scale and it has two adjustable rubber coated rollers. While on the Olympia, it has a similar scale on the paper bell and also two adjustable rubber coated rollers. I personally like the Olympia's fingers on both ends of the paper bell. It makes it much more convenient to flip up the paper bell. Whereas on the Optima, there are no fingers for flipping up the paper bell other than these fingers, of course. On the Olympia, the card guides are plastic and they're vertical edges on the inside and outside. And they also hinge open and closed. On my particular sample, the right one is cracked. It's only being held on loosely by one screw. While on my Optima, the card guides are in good condition. They're not broken. The springs are lighter tension so they move easier and also the edges are slanted. Removing the ribbon cover on the Optima to look a little bit closer at the ribbon vibrator, the surface of the ribbon vibrator is basically chromed, it's smooth, and this wire paper support has more of a flat top up here. Whereas on the Olympia, the surface of the type guide is more of a peened appearance and the wire paper support is more rounded in appearance also. And of course the deluxe engraving down here. Both the Olympia and the Optima have a single carriage release lever on the right side of the carriage. The Olympia's is over here and it is chromed. Whereas the Optima's is a plastic button that pushes down. Here again is the release button for the Optima's paper support and the paper support does telescope up similar to the Olympia's with markings on the support. Whereas on the Olympia the release for the paper support is on the right side of the carriage behind the knob and again the support does telescope up and has markings to serve as end of page indicator. The Olympia's margin settings are these push and slide controls here and here with red indicators along with a scale. Whereas on the Optima, the margin settings are behind the carriage. You have to feel behind it and they are nicely sculpted, however, here and here. But you have to operate the margins blind. There is no scale visible for the setting. On the right side of the carriage on the Optima, you have three notable controls. This lever is the paper release. You pull it up to release the tension on the paper rollers. This is the carriage release button. This is the right hand platen knob and this button on the right hand platen knob disengages the line spacing clutch for permanent adjustments to the line spacing. On the right side of the Olympia carriage you have this nice lever that pulls forward to release the paper tension. You have again a push down chromed button for the carriage release and the right platen knob which also has the clutch release for the line spacing ratchet. In overall appearance the Olympia has a little bit finer of a finish with this chromed trim along the bottom and along the edge of the ribbon cover, whereas the Optima doesn't have a trim piece on the bottom and its trim piece along the ribbon cover, at least on my sample, is a little bit dull. It looks more like a nickel plating than a chrome finish. The uh, logos are both raised 
and they're metallic and they're plated. The Optimus, of course, in the middle. The Olympia's off to the right side. One of the other major differences is the Olympia's ribbon cover hinges open, revealing the very elegant uh, deluxe logo and this peening finish along the uh, type guide area. Whereas the Optimus ribbon cover has to be manually removed to reveal the ribbon area underneath. The keyboards on both machines are very similar, but there is this interesting distinction on the Olympia, the plus and equals key is on the left hand side of the upper row, whereas the exclamation and three quarter fraction is on the right. While on the Optima, those two keys are reversed, exclamation three quarter on the left, plus equals on the right. Most of the other keys on these keyboards, though, are the same. You have the backspace on the right, the margin release on the left, and then there is this key. On the Optima, this is the tab all clear key. You have the tab key itself, and you have a tab set key here. Whereas the Olympia only has a tab key up here, and its tabs are set with adjustable slugs in the back of the machine. So the Olympia is not a key set tabulator, whereas the Optima is a key set tabulator. On the back of the Olympia you have the tabulator rack with push and slide adjustable tab stops. This machine has six tab stops available. Again, there's a scale on the back, but the scale is not visible from the front of the machine. Here is the location of the bichrome ribbon selector. It is a lever that pulls uh, forward and back. The back position is the top of the ribbon, the middle position is the stencil position, and the front position is the bottom edge of the ribbon. On the Optima, you have a rotary selector switch. The front position is the top of the ribbon. You pull it back one click to get to the stencil position, which is marked in white, and you pull it again to get to the red or bottom edge of the ribbon. Underneath the Olympia's ribbon cover on the right side there is a touch adjustment. You pull it forward to make the touch increased in tension, push it back to make the touch lighter. It has a slight range of effect at this point in its life. Whereas on the Optima it does not have a touch adjustment on the machine and that raises a good point. How is the touch on both machines? How do they compare against each other? This Olympia has an Elite typeface, and my Optima has a Pika typeface. Both machines type really, really nice dark imprint. The Olympia's imprint has the typical thin, crisp lines of precision that Olympia is known for. Whereas the Optima has a very interesting typeface, the line weight is heavier, and it makes probably the darkest imprint of any machine in my collection. There's no way I can portray the differences in touch on the video screen for you except to give you my impressions of the machines. Their touches are very similar. Keeping in mind that the Olympia's touch setting is about midway and the Optima doesn't have a touch setting, but the heaviness and snappiness of the keys feels very, very similar. But I would say the Optima's is slightly softer, slightly easier than the Olympia's. While the Olympia has a nice crisp typeface, and it is elite, 12 characters per inch, 
I must say this Optima has one of the most beautiful, dark, and stylish typefaces and imprints that I've ever seen on a manual typewriter. For me, this is just an absolutely beautiful typeface and it types so well even on this inexpensive copy paper. But the Olympia is no slouch either. Well, it's pretty clear that both of these companies were competing against each other back in their day in the late 1950s, early 1960s. There are so many things that are similar. As far as the user functionality, they're both extremely close together. They're both carriage shift machines. Their touch is very, very similar. Surprisingly so, considering what you might consider to be the DDR, the Soviet-occupied East Germany, these typewriters were made really well. The question, if you're in the market for a typewriter and you live in the United States, however, it's probably easier to find these Olympia SM3, SM4 era typewriters than it would be to find an Optima Super in the United States, just because there were more of these Olympias imported into the country back in their day. Which one should you get? Well, that's a difficult question to answer because it depends on the individual machine, the price you're paying for it, who's selling it, are they shipping it, do they know how to ship it, etc., etc. So even though both machines functionally feel very similar and have a similar kind of typing experience, I think it's pretty obvious just from looking that the Olympia has a slightly more premium appearance more shiny chrome, textured paint, hinged ribbon cover. The Optima is more rugged and basic design. More rounded curves, however, not as much shininess, uh, not as much chrome finish, not designed to give the impression of a high-end Western machine, for instance. And though these two are so similar in origin and pedigree, and functionality. I gotta say, I think the Optima seems to be more of the humble workers person's typewriter. Less fancy, showy chrome and shiny metal, and a little bit more functionality with regards to a key set tabulator. And if that's all the difference there is between these two machines, that's pretty good. Either one would satisfy you if you have the need for a workhorse typewriter to last you decades and decades. The used market now for typewriters can be very finicky. Obviously, the Olympias are in premium demand because they're considered such a highly valued machine. The Optimas, on the other hand, there's fewer of them out there on the market, at least in the United States, but they may not demand as high of a price if you find one. So again, the Optima might be a good alternative if you can't find an SM3 or 4 in your price range. For myself, I'm blessed to have both of these machines. This was a thrift store find. My wife found it. I've done a little bit of basic cleaning and degreasing and servicing to it. This one I purchased from master typewriter technician John Lewis, and he completely went over the machine, and it operates wonderfully. Both of these machines, though, operate really well. But again, I tend to lean right now toward the Optima as my favorite between the two, just because, in this case, the typeface. Not only the style of the typeface, but the darkness and heaviness of the imprint is just wonderful. So these are two very close machines. They're brothers, in a sense, separated by the politics of post-World War II Europe. But I feel very fortunate to have these in my collection, and I hope you find the same if you find one of these two machines. Have you tried both an Olympia and an Optima? What are your feelings about them? I'd love to hear your comments down below. And as always, be well, stay creative, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.